National Income National income is usually defined as the total value of all final goods and services produced in a country in a particular period, generally one year. Following are the measures of national income. A. GDP, Gross Domestic Product B, GNP, Gross National Product C, NNP, Net National Product. D. PI Personal Income E, P, Disposable Personal Income. A. GDP, Gross Domestic Product. GDP is the total value of all final goods and services produced within the geographical boundary of the country during a particular period, generally one year. In this, we consider all goods slash services produced by both resident citizens and foreign nationals who reside within the boundary of that country. Methods of calculating GDP Income method. This method sums up all the incomes accruing to the factors of production, viz. rent for land, interest for capital, profit for entrepreneurs and wages for laborers. The incomes attained by all the factors of production taken together must be equal to the sum of final expenditures in the economy. It is derived from the simple idea that the revenues earned by all the firms put together must be distributed among the factors of production as salaries, wages, profits, interest earnings and rents. Value-added method This method includes the summing up of the value of all the final goods and services in the production. Let us suppose there are only two kinds of production process taking place in the economy. They are the farmers growing tomato and ketchup producer. The farmer needs only human labor to grow tomatoes. The farmer sells a part of the produced tomatoes to the ketchup producer. The manufacturer uses tomatoes as inputs to produce ketchup. In a given year, the farmer grows tomato worth of 1000 ind. Out of this, he sells 500 ind worth of tomato to the ketchup producer. The ketchup producer using tomatoes as input produces ketchup worth of 1500 ind. So, what is the total value added in this entire process? The farmer grows tomatoes of RS1000 which will be added to total value added since that's the final output produced by the farmers. The producer used tomatoes worth RS500 as an input to produce ketchup worth of RS1500. The input used by the producer must be subtracted from the final output of ketchup produced by him. I dot T dot 1500 to 500 equals 1000. The reason for the deduction is that the value of tomatoes produced by the farmer has already been included in the value added. If this is again included in calculating the value added, we commit the mistake of double counting. Hence, the net value added will be the contribution of the farmer, 1000, plus net contribution of the ketchup manufacturer, 1000, equals 2000 in. The raw materials which one firm buys from another one that are completely used up in the process of production are called intermediate goods. Therefore, the value added by a firm equals value of production of the firm value of intermediate goods used by the firm in the process. The value added by a firm is distributed among its four factors of production, those are, labor, capital, entrepreneurship and land.
so wages, interest, profits and rents paid out by the firm must add up to the value added of the firm. Expenditure method The sum of net investment, government expenditure and consumers Expenditure on goods and services The expenditure method is concerned with the demand side of the GDP. In this method, we add the final expenditures incurred by all the firms in the economy. In the farmer catch-up producer example, the value of output in the economy by expenditure method will be calculated in the following way. The final expenditure is that part of the expenditure which does not count intermediate inputs. In our example, the RS500 worth of tomatoes that the ketchup manufacturer purchases from the, the farmer will not be included in the final expenditure. The aggregate value of the output of the, the economy is RS1500, final expenditure received by the ketchup manufacturer, plus RS500, final, expenditure received by the farmer, equals RS2000. Firms make final expenditure on the following accounts. C. Consumption expenditure incurred by the firms. I. Investment expenditure incurred by firms on capital goods. G. Expenditure incurred by the government on the purchase of final goods and services. Produced by the firms. XM. Net exports revenues earned by firms by selling their goods and services abroad. Some total of final consumption, investment, government and exports expenditures received by the firm C plus I plus G plus XM. Merits and demerits of using GDP methodology to measure the growth of a nation. Merits 1. GDP provides the information that an economy is in recession or inflation. 2. GDP helps in analyzing and comparing the economic growth of different nations. 3. Investors consider GDP data before investing in a country. 4. High GDP means industrial development and may attract more investment in a country. Demerits 1. GDP does not take into consideration productive non-market activities like builder decorating his own house, mother cooking food, carpenter making products for himself. 2. GDP does not show income inequality in a nation. 3. GDP does not take in consideration social aspects like terrorism, intolerance, casteism, democracy, health and education penetration, women empowerment etc. So, GDP may not be the true reflector of development in a country. Alternative measures 1. Gini coefficient Gini coefficient gives information on income inequality, but it fails to take into account social measures and government intervention for social upliftment. 2. Gross National Happiness, adopted by Bhutan in the 1970s, GNH measures the happiness of people as criteria of national development. But it does not take into account gender equality quality education, infrastructure development, 